Tarkov is a game that relies on you having a lot of money so that you can go into raids as your PMC to complete quests or PvP. Naturally with a game like Tarkov comes a variety of different ways to make money. And if you're a new player, it can be very confusing to decide which way is the easiest and most efficient. So in this video we are going to be taking a look at one of my personal favorite ways to make money while also playing on the easiest map to learn in my opinion. Customs. The method we are going to be going over today is something very well known to experienced players and that is stash runs. So what exactly are stashes? Well, stashes are containers filled with a variety of loot in them ranging from bad to very rare, sometimes even holding things such as bitcoins or GPUs, and because of that, you can see just how valuable these stashes can be, especially early into a wipe. This map shows all the different stashes that are available on this map, and because the majority of them are on the southern or left side of the map, our route is going to look something like this. If we spawn on the western side, then we are going to want to try to extract on the eastern side. And if we spawn on the eastern side, then we want to extract on the western side. Obviously, we aren't going to hit all the stashes in every raid, because sometimes things get in the way of doing so. But as long as we can hit a few, then we should be fine. And depending on if you're playing as a PMC or scav, will determine where you will spawn in the raid. However, no matter what you guys decide to play as, we will have the same objective. Trying to avoid players and hugging the left side of the map, since that is where majority of the stashes are. And with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into today's video. Okay, so here we go. It looks like we spawned over here by REOEF, which is on the northern side, I believe, of the map. So our goal is to head over towards the southern side of the map, and we're going to just try to hit as many stashes as we can. And yes, I know there's two other stashes here, but I'm just going to try to follow the guide that I set out for you guys. Just so there's no confusion about any extra stashes that I may be hitting or this and that. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the goal is always to head over towards the southern side of the map, which is where we're actually heading to right now. This is where dorms is. And just so you guys know, this is actually a, a live raid. This isn't anything in the private matches. So we could run into players or other player scavs that may try to betray us. Just so you guys don't think anything is fake or anything like that. So we're actually approaching our first stash right here. It's going to be in this blue container. So this is where dorms is. This is where the apartment buildings are. And we're going to go right here into... The container and it looks like there's already a scav in there but i think it may be ai because he's facing the wall okay so all we got is some apollo cigarettes out of that one so nothing too good i'm hoping that these stashes haven't been hit but obviously that could happen sometimes until we get decent loot to show off exactly how good these stashes actually are okay so in this one we got a hat and a pistol so that's another stash right here it's actually inside the wheel in case you guys didn't see that it's right here in the wheel the other one is actually behind the bus depot here. Just sounded like that scab saw someone. But we're just going to ignore it for now. Uh, this next stash should be around here by this tree. So this is where the apartments are. This is where the bus depot is. And this should be right here. Okay, so we got another pistol and a rig. We're going to keep going along this path. And we should be hitting another stash right here. Going past this broken wall, there should be one on this lamppost. And obviously, if you're a new player, you're going to want to take as much of the loot as possible, even the things that may look like junk, just because it's money. And once you guys actually unlock the flea market, you'll actually get a lot more money from listing things compared to just selling it to the vendors, such as therapists. Okay, so after going through that lamppost, we're going to go along this uh, railroad. And the next stash should be, according to the map, somewhere around this area. I've never actually hit this stash, so this is actually a new one for me as well. So it looks like based off the map that it's over here by this tower thing. So we're going to just look around here. It's maybe around here somewhere. Okay, so it looks like it's right here. So this is the tower and it's going to be right here along the fence. It looks like it's on the opposite side of the fence. Okay, and this one's been hit. So from here, we're actually going to backtrack towards the railroad. And we're going to hit the one near new gas that we actually missed real quick. So we only have nine minutes left in this raid. There's been a lot of shooting going on as well. But we're just going to go ahead and ignore that and just concentrate on our stash runs. So here's the next stash right here in the corner. Okay, so this TP200 actually sells for around 20k to therapists. So you guys don't even have to list it. And from here, we're just going to hug along this mountain. Go to the top of this other tower up here. And there should be another three or four stashes over here. So after coming up here and passing through this area, the next stash is actually going to be right here along this blue fence. Okay, so we got a grenade from that. And the next one should be in the back up here by Passage Between Rocks. If you guys do a lot of scabs, you guys should be familiar with this uh, extract right here. 
So it should be behind a tree along the fence. So it should be right here. Okay, so we got the nice headset. It's about 40k, 40-50k. So from there, we're going to just go ahead and follow this road down towards the left side of it. And we should hit some dumpsters to your left once you get on the main road. And near these dumpsters here should be another dumpster with a stash right next to it. Okay, so it's nice. So we got a military cable. It's pretty good. Okay, and since we don't have much time, we're just going to go ahead and keep following this path here and hit the last of the stashes we can hit on this side. There should be another three or so we could hit. There's one right along this wall that we could hit by the bushes. And there's another one in the corner as soon as you go through the hole by the big red gate. And the last one should be in the very corner of the map over there as well in some bushes. Okay, so this is the one that we find here. We're obviously not going to take this because it's too heavy. But if you guys did want to take that, it does sell pretty well early on into a white. What the heck? Okay, so we might die here. These two players can actually try to fight us. Unfortunately, it may lead to our death here. Actually, we should be good. We have this, uh, this extract here. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and loot these guys. And we're going to see what we come out with and just hit a reset and do one more scab run for you guys. But as you guys can see, things don't always go according to plan on these scab runs. And it's going to be the same thing when you're doing player runs. You're going to meet into some people. You're going to run into some people that are going to try to kill you for your loot. There's really nothing you can really do about it. You're going to have to just stand your ground and try to win these fights. Scav runs are always a really good way to practice PvP as well if you're a newer player. So this actually really helps with that. So this guy also had another expensive headset. So we're going to go ahead and take that. I think his bag may be bigger than ours as well. We're going to go ahead and take his pistol. So I may just drop what this guy has right here. Looks like his bag may be empty. I'm not sure though. Let me double check. Now he has a few things in here. I don't think he has anything useful though. So we're gonna just pop some painkillers so we can move freely. Okay, I think we're good to go. So like I was saying before that those guys started shooting, there's actually one more stash we could hit just before we hit extract. Just like I hit it for you guys. And it's right here by this tree by the big red gate like I mentioned. It's empty, so I'm assuming that the one all the way, if you just follow this road down, there's going to be another stash right in those bushes right there. But it's probably going to be hit just because uh, it looks like these scab players came from there. So with a minute left, we're just going to go ahead and extract. Okay, so it looks like we spawned very early on into this raid. There's 28 minutes, so there's plenty of time to actually head over to the left side of the map and loot up as much as we can. But that was a very interesting first raid. I did not expect you guys to pull up to us at the very end of the raid and start shooting us. Oh, uh, I think there's another player scab here. I don't know this guy is. Okay, yeah, so it's a player scab. Oh, we also have a airdrop coming in right now. But we do have to watch out for players. And I know there's a few stashes over here on this side, but remember our goal is always to head over towards the left side of the map. Or I guess the southern side of the map and hit all those stashes that I hit in the previous raid. But as you guys saw, that's not always going to be the case, especially when there's other players involved. Sometimes you got to just take what you can and just get out with it. But I'm not complaining because we did manage to come out with almost 500k in loot. So that's actually a lot. So it does look like it's very foggy right now. I'm not sure what the weather conditions are. Looks like there's a few scabs that died this way. So there may be players over at dorms. So we have to be very careful. Oh, and it actually seems like we spawned in with the lab's key card. So it's already like 100k loot. That's why it's always good to just have super high scav rep. That way you could just spam scavs all day long if you guys wanted to actually make money. I think my scav timer right now is around 8 minutes. It's literally just free money. But we should be approaching our first stash here. It looks like there's a player in front of us. Player, player scav. It's 
kind of hard to tell. Maybe a scav. It did sound like there was players in dorms though. I'll go ahead and take that helmet. This guy's probably looting the stashes here. Hoping that player scout doesn't shoot us. We're going to go ahead and hit up this stash over here in the wheel like I mentioned before. Okay, we're going to just take this water, but we didn't get anything else. But we're going to hit the other stash over here by the tree now behind the bus depot like I mentioned in the other one. It does look like it was looted actually, so we're going to just not hit that. There's a mag on the ground there. What happened? Where dorms? Huh? At dorms? All right, let me hit this stash and then I'll go there. All right, but we're actually not going to go there. So we're going to just let that guy bleed out to death. So we're going to hit this stash right here by the lamppost. Okay, we got a PSU, so a power supply. Not too bad. And we're going to go ahead and hit this other one over here this time. So we won't have to actually backtrack. There's a lot of uh, player scouts right now for it being uh, super early on. Okay, we're gonna just keep going ahead because these guys seem like they're following us. Or at least that other guy with the gun is following us. So I'm gonna keep pushing forward and trying to avoid him. I mean, if I wanted to, I could kill him. But there's no point in doing that. So we're going to hit this other one by the blue fence. This one's empty. I'm hoping the one by passage between rocks is not hit. But if it is, then we're going to have to just push down towards the dumpsters. You know, and the goal with this guide is just to get, you know, in and out as quickly as possible and making as much money as you possibly can. Sometimes the stashes are going to be dry like that, but obviously that's not always going to be the case. And from here, we're just going to head down the road again like we did in the previous one. And we're going to hit the dumpster one more time. Okay, and we got another helmet, so we could actually take it. Uh, this helmet isn't really worth that much. But like I said before, you got to just take what you can, especially when you're doing stash runs. And if you guys actually decide to do this on your actual PMC rather than your scab, you'll always usually have first dibs on the uh, on the stashes. I don't know about early on into a wipe because more people might be trying to camp them just to get the supplies that they need for their quests and stuff. There may be a player down here. I don't know what that is. Okay, I think this is a scab. But you can see him also doing stash runs. So he's hitting the stash in the bush over that we were about to hit. So we're going to just let him have that. We're going to just keep pushing forward. We could actually extract here though, but we're going to double check the other ones. And hopefully he did not take them. But it's more than likely that he did. I don't like the way that guy's looking at us. If he follows us, I'm going to kill him. Or try to. that lag was okay so there's also another stash right here outside this building we follow these pipes right here so on this one we're gonna get just some glasses so nothing too valuable and I'm assuming the one in the bush is probably hit I'm hoping this one wasn't taken this is the final one we're gonna hit for this raid before we actually just end the video here Okay, and we just get a bulb so if you're a newer player you're obviously going to take what you can just take everything 
even if it doesn't look that valuable. But me, since I uh, don't really care about that stuff, I'm kind of just leave it there. So although the loot wasn't that great in that raid, it's still a good example of the route you should be following and the people you could encounter while actually doing these stash runs. But I think what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and sell off what we got from that raid and just combine it with what we got in the previous raid and see how much we came out with in just uh, two scav runs that we did. Okay, so even in that run where we didn't even really get anything from the stash, we still managed to come out with 211k. Which brings us to around 700 to 800k in just two scav runs. But before this video ends, I just wanted to say, you know, I'm not too familiar with making guides and that sort of thing. So if you guys have any feedback regarding this video or things I should do in the future, please go ahead and leave those in the comments. I think it will really help to actually have some feedback from you guys because like I said, I'm not familiar with making guides. I've never done this sort of thing before. So this is all new to me. And uh, But with that being said, uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.